When the snow and ice season comes around each year, there is much anticipation and often anxiety that faces each company that performs brine, plow, and salt events. For some contractors, the season is a dream, and for others, it feels more like a nightmare due to the ability to easily make money or lose money each event. This demonstration of how Aspire works before, during, and after a snow or ice event shows how our solution is a single database for all aspects of the season, including subcontractors. Using Aspire will reduce common mistakes, increase accuracy of hours and materials, and improve the speed of invoicing all of which will allow you to manage more contracts with the confidence of growing profitably along the way. The demonstration is gonna walk you through the following key events in the Aspire software system. First, we will make initial communication when an event is on the horizon. Second, we will demonstrate how an event is scheduled for both internal routes and for subcontractors. Third, we'll look at how hours and materials are collected in real time on our mobile app. Fourth, we'll review our subcontractor portal and how to provide a purchase order for your subs. Fifth, we'll create an invoice to send or email our clients upon completion of the event. And finally, we will look at a few different report options to review performance and make incremental improvements for the next event. Here on the main Aspire homepage, the first thing we're going to do if we know a snow event or ice event is on the horizon is go into our contacts. And we're going to do a communication to our customers and or our subs. Here you can see I already have a list that I created. And what it's doing is grouping all of my customers that I have snow contracts with, and also my subcontractors that I use for different events. So we can easily minimize this. We can check all these. And from this field, you can see all their communication as far as email. And we're going to send a bulk email to these contacts. All their names will come up here. Regarding is unnecessary because uh, it's regarding this uh, email that we're sending out. But here we're gonna put in our subject and our notes. As you can see, I typed in my subject. There's a one to three inch snowstorm on the horizon for today. I also typed in an email that was going to send out to all these folks. If you click inside there, you can make of course any changes uh, to that email that you would like. Also, I'm going to send a, an attachment to this email. So I click on this little icon to send an attachment and I go right to wherever it is that I saved it. In this case, I have a detailed storm alert email that's going to send some detail about the upcoming storm from a service that I, that I use as a company. So now you can see that one attachment's there, and then I'm going to just send that email. When I come back to my contacts page, I could do the exact same thing. I could uncheck this, and I could check all my subcontractors, and I could do the same thing, sending a different type of note to my subcontractors that when I expect them to be up and moving about and be ready for the upcoming storm. Maybe I only send it to a few subcontractors because I'm not using salting for certain subs or plowing or vice versa. So those options are all there available for you to send any kind of communication that you need prior to the event coming. Next, we're gonna go over to the schedule board. So now that we've communicated with some important folks, we're gonna go to our schedule board and actually schedule this event. You can see I selected here which router manager that I'm going to be scheduling it. So I already have a manager that's a snow manager for the north. Uh, you can have however many managers that you have different routes for. And you can see on the left-hand side, I have multiple routes. For this specific storm, I'm not gonna be using all my routes. We're gonna concentrate today on showing a snow shovel route, an internal route of our team ran by Frank. And then we also have a subcontractor Bill that's going to be doing some plowing for us. And we're going to concentrate on those two right there. So I'm going to come down here to the cog wheel and schedule an event. And I'm going to create a list that I've already done to save some time in this demonstration. But in this list, you can see I'm grouping all these different contracts that I have snow contracts with. And I'm going to look at the two down here, Plaza Frontenac and the Ritz-Carlton St. Louis. And I've already assigned the default route to those properties and to these specific services. So one is for snow plowing for one to three inches and one for snow clearing of walkways for one to three inches. So right now I'm going to select the two for the internal, uh, for Frank, our crew member. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to create the schedule to visit. Uh, the visit today is today, the storm, storm's coming tonight. And the route, um, I don't need to worry about it because I had that default route, but I could select the route if, if I needed to. 
So when I go back, you're going to see here are those two tickets that I just scheduled. It's on Frank's route. It's for today. And you can see those uh, in gray right there. I don't need to schedule my snow subcontractor right now because what I'm going to do is schedule from him from his portal. And you won't need to do it from here. And as soon as he starts working on a job site or put time against this, that ticket will pop up as we'll explain in a little bit. So now that the event is scheduled, what we're going to do next is assume we're out in the field and uh, Frank and his crew is out there and they're going to be doing some sidewalk clearing. So we're going to pull up the mobile app and you can see in the mobile app, and this is pretty much what it will look like out in the field, uh, snow mode is on and we're going to just pin in and, and you can see here is Frank's screen. So Frank is our crew leader. So he has access to more things than just a crew member. He's going to clock in because he's starting his day for this event or starting his time for this event. Uh, he could also go into schedule and issues and crews, which we're going to do in a second. But he's actually going to log out and pass his phone to his crew member, Aaron, who is going to also log in. And all Aaron needs to do is clock in. You can see as a crew member, you don't have access to the same thing as a crew leader or supervisor. So Aaron simply clocks in and it comes back out. And then Frank can go back into his phone and you can see the schedule for the day or any issues or anything else. So let's go into the schedule. And as you can see, here are those two tickets that you can still see on the screen. Here's for Plaza Frontenac and Ritz-Carlton. And there's those two tickets that he can work at. So if he clicks on either of these, so let's say Plaza Frontenac, he can do a couple of different things. He can start right away. He can look if there's any issues. He can add material, which he might do a little bit later, and if, and if there's any documents. So I'm going to start this job. And you can see that there's an equipment option there. So maybe I have Aaron's going to be on the snowblower and Frank's just going to be on a shovel and we can start both of these folks at the same time or we could start them separately if we had to if they were at different sites. Once they start started, we can do a couple of different things here. Like for example, I'm going to add a picture and I'm going to say this is what the sidewalks maybe looked like as soon as I got there and they weren't plowed and it's probably important for any time we're doing snow work that we can see what it looks like prior to and then upon leaving. So they're working there for a second. So if we go back to our Aspire page and refresh, what you'll see is the area around that ticket is a hazy green, which means I actively have people working there. And this little icon that pops up that looks like a tablet also indicates there's time now being put against one of those two tickets. And you can see the one that's actually highlighted right now. Now we're gonna go check out and see what our subcontractor Bill is doing. So Bill could have access to the mobile app as well, but most likely the, the sub would simply use the typical Aspire portal site and they'll go inside and let's see what he'll see when he logs in. And now this could happen a couple of different ways. Bill could log in from the field and do this live during the event, could do it after the event, or maybe he brings in a, a timesheet and somebody in the office in Bill's office comes in and does this work for them and fills in the time. Here's what Bill's screen will look like when he comes in. It's relatively simple. It shows for Bill's plowing service on this date. Uh, you can see he has a shoveling. Sometimes he might shovel for us, but here he's doing the plow. And you can select the service. And you can see that he's currently going to this Plaza Frontenac where our crews are as well. And he knows, because we told him it was a one to three inch event. So he has access to the events that we've given access as a subcontractor. And he's going to pick the, his plow service. After he picks a proper service, he's simply going to go, all right, how much time did I do this? Maybe Bill was there um, today from 5 p.m. And maybe he worked today, same day, and he finished at uh, 11 p.m. And then he's simply going to hit and submit his time. Once he confirms that and says, says, are you sure you want to submit this light to time and materials? Yes. And that's all Bill needs to do. It's that simple as a subcontractor. So we're going to log out as Bill. And when we come back to our schedule board, now we can see something is a little bit different. So just by Bill entering his time, the ticket has now appeared. 
like we mentioned before, you could schedule your ticket as well, but you don't need to for subcontractor. When they enter time, it'll be here. And you can look into this time entry and you can see that Bill was there for about six hours, just like we put in. Now we can come back and see how our internal crews would be wrapping up their event. So here I am, Frank, I've done my work. I've been working out, working hard on these sidewalks. I'm going to log back into my phone real quick. As I pin back in, I can go to my schedule and a couple things can happen. You can see that I'm still currently working because it's a little bit darker at Plaza Frontenac. Um, I could go into this. I could say I'm going to stop. And I'm going to maybe stop work for all of us at the same time, both Aaron and I, and, like, and I would like to complete this ticket. This will automatically populate, but in this case, we can quickly say it was 30 degrees out. The wind speed was about five miles an hour from the north, and there was no damage on the site. So these forms can be selected, they can be made customized, and I'm going to finish this off. And now that ticket has moved down here to a different color now that they were completed with it. I could have gone back in there. One thing that you might make sure that you want to tell everyone is and that you want to add any photos of how you finished the event. So here would be maybe how our sidewalks look like when we were done. And maybe Frank forgot to add that, but you can see how easy it is to go back and add the picture of what the sidewalks look like upon leaving. If I go back to my schedule, I can go into my other site, my Risk Carlson site. I can do the exact same thing as we did before. I could start all of us and do the exact same thing. The other thing that's important is in the field, you might want to make sure that you're collecting materials. And once again, maybe Frank forgot to put that when he logged out of the job, but he can easily go back before he wraps up for the day. He can go into the materials button and he can say, you know, what whatever type of inventory maybe he used. Uh, this is uh, for the snowblower, but if he had like rock, rock salt, so maybe he used a certain amount of bags or whatever type of bags he's using, maybe he used 10 of those bags and he just simply marks that in and that's it. You can also see now there's two documents listed to this. Uh, what are those two documents? It was the two photos that he put in there. These would come right from his phone. They wouldn't be saved on the computer like we showed for the demo, but you could show the, those photos and see exactly what they are. And you could look at each photo separately. And when Frank is done with all of his jobs, he's simply going to clock out for the day. And it says, would you like to fill out the end of day form? Yes. And again, these can be customized, these forms. In this situation, you can see the questions here. Did they have any damage to properties? No. Were any workers injured? No. And rate your quality of work for today. Uh, subjective. Uh, Frank thinks he did a fabulous job. And then he can log out. Now, back on our schedule screen, we can see that that job, that ticket was grayed out because Frank is done with it and he looks like he only used about 24% of the time that he was allowed. And the other ticket looks like Frank actually didn't use because in this sample, we actually did not go into that one. Uh, I can go into this tablet and I can open this time entry screen. And as a manager, I would look in here at the end of the event and I, I would confirm that these hours are all correct. I can make any adjustments and say, no, that's not correct. I want to make a change. and we could also make any changes to like the bags of salt or any other material that we had as well, or maybe he forgot something and he could simply he could simply add material right here. So you can see here, I made some changes and I said they actually clocked in. I, I fixed the times here if I needed to. Um, and I also said they were only here for about a half an hour. Uh, then they actually went to this other job for a little over half an hour as well. And I wanna add a little bit of materials so I want to say that they used uh, same thing, rock salt bags, and they used five of them over at this other site. And they completed that ticket as well and brought that time over. So I can make those changes if I need to here. And when we get back to this screen, now you can see both tickets are completed. You can see that they actually used more hours than they were allowed, 123%, 144% of the hours. The next thing I want to do is make sure that I actually pay my subcontractor and give them a purchase receipt. 
So I can click into this work ticket. And you can see right now that I had the six hours that my subcontractor worked there, but there's still no actual cost against there yet because he was a subcontractor. So what I'm going to do is come down here and I'm gonna create a receipt. And I'm gonna go up here and select my vendor, which is of course Bill's Plowing. And here's the event that I did. You can see that there's already a pre-agreed price that we agreed to for these services, this one to three inch plowing. So his information comes up here and we simply have to receive this on today when the work was actually done. After I receive, I'm going to come down and I'm going to mark that this was received. Now the cost will actually hit this service that we just did. So one of the other easy things is right from here, I can send out a quick email of this receipt to Bill. So make sure he has this. So I can fill in the information right here. So I just simply put his email up here, a subject, please find attached PO for the snow services on today's date. And I could write a note here, whatever, of course you want. Thanks again, Bill. And I would simply just email that off. And now when you refresh that screen, now you can see the cost against it because we received that purchase receipt. And finally, while I'm on the same screen, I would just simply complete this ticket for plows, for Bill's plow service on this day for that crew leader and on that date. Once that's all done, now we have to actually go log this event so we can do our invoicing. Uh, you can see now that I have both the same icons here, which is perfect, which means I'm ready to go log my event. So in my invoicing tab, I can go down here to log event, and I'm simply going to add a new event using my green plus sign. So I quickly fill everything out here. Uh, the event type can be snow, ice, storm, freezing rain, however you have that set up. The rest of the details about how long the event lasted, the zip codes involved, and then here in the description, uh, you probably want to have the reminder, maybe you have a, a report of something that you use about what happened at an event and the details. So there's a reminder and some clear visibility of what happened. Once I hit save, now you can see in my events, that it's right here, is this event that we just put in here. Now we're ready to actually go over to our invoicing assistant. And over here in invoicing assistant, you can make lists as well. Some default, I have a current snow invoices list that's simply pulling some recent ones. And then here's our Plaza Frontenac. And you can see by the color code, if you look down here in the key, this invoice is ready to go. If there was something wrong, like a missing address or tax jurisdiction, or there's still work remaining, it would say so. So we'll simply select Plaza Frontenac and come down here to generate our invoice. It is for today that we're going to set the invoice date. And you can see now the batch number, uh, the invoice number for this property. Uh, there could be multiple here since there's only one. I could just simply come right down here and I can complete this batch. Once I complete the batch, you can see the information here about uh, invoicing the, the contact. Um, and the information will be already there with the tokens in included about what's going to get filled in there. And it's going to say your Creditscape invoice number and so on and so forth for this property. If there's somebody else I want to make sure that I also got this uh, email as well, I could add them here. So if there's somebody else like here, you can see if I want my primary contact, also receive this invoice or the billing contact. Uh, and then whoever was set up this email invoice contact. So maybe I want my billing contact to have that as well. And I'll add there and then I complete this batch. So it kicks me back out to my invoicing assistant where I can see that invoice is now gone. If I want to go look that up into my invoice batches, I can take a look at that. And I can see I, I did a quick filter to say, here's the one I want to look at. And if you wanted to, you can come down here and you can print this. Maybe some of your clients uh, don't want the emails. Maybe they want to print a copy. Maybe you hand deliver it. Maybe you send it as a PDF, but you can go here, print this, choose your report layout and hit print. However, you set up your invoices with your formatting. It will look just like the way you want it to. And you can see this for Plaza Frontenac. 
uh, for snow plowing one to three inches for $238.10. So it's that simple, I can save this and send it as a PDF. And of course, some clients uh, don't want to receive their bill either way and they want to use a client portal, which is perfect. So they can go into our client portal, they can log in using their information that they've already have set and they'll log in here. And we can look for any invoices to whichever property that she might have access to. And you can see here's the invoice right here that we just created. So you can click here, you can view this invoice. And there it is, looks just like the one we just saw. Or you can of course go right away and pay it. And if no payment methods were found, uh, no problem, maybe she forgot to do that and she would simply come up here and manage her payment methods and set those up. So now everything is pretty much done as far as sending a purchase receipt or PO to our sub. We've already invoiced our client for this event. We can go into our reports here. There are some reports there you can look at. We can also go look into our work tickets. So let's see how we did. How did we perform? So in here, uh, I've already created a list to make it a little bit easier for completed snow work tickets for this week. And you can see here for the Plaza Frontenac and the Ritz-Carlton. And you can see both the internal for Frank, this, the crew leader, and you can also see for, maybe we could just minimize this one we don't wanna look at right now, and for the plow service for Bill. So you can follow it over, you can see actual hours, uh, material, the sub actual total cost, earned revenue. You can see your gross margin. So for the sub, we did quite well. Didn't matter how many hours he put against it, that was agreed upon, uh, how much you get paid for each one to three inch clearing. And then here you can see our gross margin for our internal crews, not so good. Remember we manipulated our hours just to sort of prove the point, but whatever the actual hours were, you could see that and then your gross profit. And you can see how you're doing um, for this whole event or anything else that's tied to this day. You could also look for for the week, for the entire season, whatever you choose to. So the work ticket screen gives you lots of different options to see how you're performing in addition to the, the reports and standard reports that exist there, such as our weather events report is one option. And here's that weather event report, shows you also some basic information events, start time, end time. Uh, you can see the property work ticket numbers, some labor costs, material costs, and so on. And there we have it. A quick snow and ice demonstration of an event. We talked about the communication prior to the event, both with our clients and our subcontractors. We looked at how we schedule routes, both internally and for subs. We showed the mobile app for tracking hours, materials, adding photos of the site for before and after. We also showed how the subcontractor accesses their portal to put in their hours, how we provide POs or purchase receipts to the subcontractor afterwards. Uh, we showed the invoicing upon completion and how we could send that invoice in multiple different ways or look at it through the customer's portal so they could pay it directly. And then finally, we did a quick little thing on reports and accountability and looked at the work order ticket report and see how we did it, how we performed.